Hey, you start the recording, Laura. Perfect. So hi, everyone. Um, so today, um, Dr. Edward Wallace will talk about the skills underpinning open uh, fair science. Um, and this work will kind of focus on what Edinburgh Carpentries are doing to develop those skills in our community here at the university. And so Edward is going to present the data science for health and bioscience grant that he's currently working on, which will develop new open teaching materials and fair science principles as uh, statistics and reproducible workflows for the university. So yes, yeah, so it'll be about a half an hour chat and which will be followed by a Q&A session. So I'll hand it over to you, Edward. Thanks very much for speaking to us today. Thank you very much for Laura and Eve for inviting me. And thanks for everyone for coming. I'm very excited about this wave of activism for doing science right and helping each other to do it in the university. So my name is Edward Wallace. Um, I run a lab in biological sciences, um, and today I'm talking about skills training for open science and talking about both the impact and rewards of working with an organization called Edinburgh Carpentries that teaches foundational coding skills. So the point of today's talk is that doing open science actually requires foundation, foundational skills. It rests on a foundation of skills. The Carpentries approach develops these skills in a community. I'm going to tell you about a new grant that we have to expand skills training and grow this community in Edinburgh. And the point of this is also to talk about how it is impactful and rewarding to teach these skills to other people, which will hopefully come through the talk. Um, but I'll end by giving a few more reasons why you might want to get involved in doing this kind of thing yourself. So let's start with who am I and how did I get here? And I got here mostly by writing code. I did a mathematics PhD at the University of Chicago and my publications there involved simulated data and a little MATLAB, a few MATLAB scripts called StockSim code. Uh, that were published in PLOS Computational Biology and have been used by several master's students since then who email me saying, can I use your code? Then I did a postdoc in systems biology at Harvard. And as part of my first project there, I wrote a bad R package called code on fits um, for the evolution to um, understand the evolution of protein coding sequences supporting a publication in molecular biology and evolution. And even though that was an, a bad R package, the good bits of that R package that have been picked up and developed and incorporated into other better R packages by other labs, especially Mike Gilchrist at the University of Tennessee. So that's reproducible science. I then did a biochemistry postdoc at Chicago. Um, and for that, there was some really heavy lifting in um, statistical models and R code uh, analyzing and visualizing protein aggregation from mass spectrometry data that was both published and that's where we started sharing work in a public repository called Dryad. And then from 2016 to 17, I was a fellow in informatics and cell biology here in Edinburgh. And my publication in that time also used R code for analyzing splicing data published in RNA. And I do have some open science guilt there because that paper definitely says that the scripts to create the figures are available upon request. And it's got 35 citations and nobody has requested these scripts. So one doesn't expect perfection, but I have been trying to get better about it, better at it over my career. Now I'm a group leader in systems biology and we commissioned this illustration from illustrator Tom Humberston, who lives in Edinburgh, to show that we work on fungi, which we've shown oversized in their big aquarium. We have a diverse team that works on fungi, and we study them using computational um, quantitative methods, especially sequencing. You can find out more on the lab website. And still, we're writing code in order to do our science. We have software projects in the lab, including Ribaviz, a bioinformatics pipeline for processing data measuring protein translation from ribosome profiling. And that's a collaboration with the 
EPCC, Center for Excellence in High Performance Computing, especially Dr. Mike Jackson. We have another software project called Tidy QPCR, which is an R package for tidy quantitative PCR analysis. And that was supported by mentorship from the eLife Open Innovation Leaders Program, which is a fantastic training program. But even when a project isn't primarily a software project, we are routinely trying to analyze all our data in reproducible ways. Um, we're mostly doing it in R with R Markdown. We're using other tools like Python, Shell, Nextflow, and others as needed, and working to move basically everything to Git version control so that we can easily track changes, collaborate, and back up everything. And the latest paper that we published, um, we put a lot of effort into doing this open. So here's a page of the Zenodo archive, which is a digital object identifier, um, digital object identifier, minted permanent archive of all of our code that did all of the analysis for the paper on R and GitHub. And for this, I spent an awful lot of time writing readme files and checking things. So it's it's quite a long journey in open in doing science and trying to get better at open science as I go along. But as a new PI, I have new problems. And so my problems as a new principal investigator are that I have less time to code than I used to because I have to go to lots of meetings and give talks and run my lab. I have to write papers and grants. I have to do some teaching. And it's anyway, the coding isn't just on me because, in fact, everyone in my research group needs to code because even wet lab biologists need to wrangle and plot their data, whether it's quantitative PCR, Western blot images, what, anything. And then when they publish their data, when they publish a paper, they need to share their data. So we still need code to be written and organized and shared. And my problem is how can I promote good practices in research software in my group when I'm writing less code myself? I have to support other people to do it. And this problem is of course far bigger than me because here we are in the 21st century and all researchers need to learn how to code. They need how to know how to analyze their data reproducibly, reliably, and efficiently. And they need to do this at all career stages. And they need to learn this somehow. So how are they going to learn how to, how are you, how are we going to learn how to script our data analyses, share everything, work reproducibly? And the underlying problem here is that open science depends on skills. Working open needs both confidence and capability. And I think this is summed up in the kind of sentiment that I've heard a lot from colleagues, and you probably have too, which is, it's a nice idea, but I don't do that. So working open is a really nice idea. Sharing primary data analysis, it's a nice idea, but I don't do that. I can't do that. I don't code. It's too hard. I don't understand Zenodo, et cetera. So how do you build that confidence and capability? Well, there's another problem that reproducible research actually uses a large software stack. I've mentioned at least 10 different software tools so far. But the tools are a bit of, are not the focus. Actually, the using tools rests on foundational skills, including foundational skills in coding, foundational skills in data science, and foundational skills in project organization. And I have started, oh, and to gather evidence for this, a couple of years ago, we did a survey of what research biologists need in the School of Biological Sciences in Edinburgh. So to find out what they need, we asked them. And this SBS research comp computing survey set out to inform research computing training for students, staff, and faculty to find out what data and software people use to find out what skills and training they think they need, and to give input to the UKRI BBSRC data intensive bioscience review, which was underway at the time. And so to do this, we used the, um, the website 
onlinesurveys.act.uk, which used to be JISC. It's a secure and very nicely managed website aimed at academics. We designed a one page survey which could be completed in five minutes in April 2019. And for anyone here, we're very happy to share this survey design on the online surveys website for you to adapt for your own local needs, open science or research computing. I'm going to very briefly summarize um, some of what we learned there. One is that we actually had very good response rates. Who filled in the survey included about 147 responses, so that's about a quarter of the research workforce in the School of Biological Sciences, group leaders, postdocs, PhD students, and RNAs. Excuse my Freudian slip talking about RNAs when I meant an RA. I think people here, especially Flick and Sander, will appreciate that. I'm an RNA biologist. But we had responses from many institutes and subfields. However, this was self-selected responses, so we probably got more responses from the people who cared more. And the headline figure is that computing is required as a portion of success of most projects. So a lot of people said that 100% of their project success depending on computing, and almost everybody else said that a substantial proportion of their project success depended on research computing. We, and the problem with this is the skills gap. Many of us don't have formal training. Um, less than half have any formal training in computing. Less than half have any formal training in statistics that they need for their research. And a substantial chunk of these people would like more training. And when we asked what was driving this training with a free, um, a freely worded question. The biggest frustrations in research computing centered around, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to ask. So people talked about not knowing what software to use, lacking knowledge, needing more support and data. But that confidence and capability thing of knowing where to start. And then this feeds in to a lot of issues because in our department, we use many different kinds of biological data. We do se have sequence alignment data, we have microscopy, de uh, gel or blot images, qPCR, flow cytometry, molecular structures, phylogenetic trees, a great diversity of data that rests on correspondingly diverse software. And it's very difficult to teach all of that, but maybe we can teach the foundational skills that support many of these kinds of analysis. We asked people's biggest need in computing training. And again, people want training in bioinformatics and statistics and data analysis and Python programming. So researchers themselves are mostly asking for foundational skills. They're asking for generic skills that they can build other specific analyses of. And so that's why um, we are working with the Carpentries, and the Carpentries is an organization that teaches foundational coding and data science skills to researchers worldwide. Um, the Carpentries is an organization based in California, but with very international reach. And it started out with different sections on data carpentry, library carpentry, and software carpentry. And the history of this is that in 1998, Software Carpentry was founded as a series of workshops by Greg Wilson. And then in 2014, um, Data Carpentry was added as a more data focused version. In 2015, Library Carpentry was founded to provide um, computational training for library professionals. And this is, and then 2018, the Carpentries was founded as a much bigger organization that incorporated all of these different strands. And there's a very nice article about the history of this software carpentry lesson learned by the founder, Greg Wilson, who is, by the way, an Edinburgh EPCC alum. What's taught in the fundamental curriculum, software carpentry curriculum tends to teach bash shell, Git, and Python, so fundamental coding things. Library carpentry, teaches introductions to dealing with data and Unix shell and OpenRefine, which is a 
nice open tool from Google to um, do reproducible analysis of tabular data like spreadsheets. And data carpentry, which is, again has material on spreadsheets, open refine and R for the real fundamentals of reproducible data analysis. This relies on on some core values of openness and, and ethos and pedagogy. So the open community is that all the resources, all the teaching resources are developed collaboratively on GitHub by volunteers. And so they are peer reviewed and they're available under a Creative Commons uh, CCBY license. It has a strong ethos based mostly on volunteering, based on inclusivity and respect and the Carpentry's code of conduct it's a really fundamental aspect of the community, so people treat each other well and everybody is welcome. And it has this pedagogical drive, a structured pathway for the development of members from learner to helper to instructor to trainer, so that somebody who takes a carpentry's workshop for the first time one year can come back later and help, and then another year be actually leading the whole workshop. So it develops expertise. Here in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Carpentries is a local chapter that provides a coordinated approach to teach carpentries in Edinburgh. This is a community effort across departments, including biological sciences. Um, it provides support with planning and delivery of workshops. There's been financial support from um, Information Services and EPCC and SOPA. It reaches beyond the U University of Edinburgh to Harriet Watt and further to the Scottish workforce. And the, we have an organizing committee and a steering committee to try and somehow balance demand and capacity, given that demand is huge. Um, and I want to say that this is has a very important role, leadership role from the Software Sustainability Institute, some of whose members sit in Edinburgh, and the Software Sustainability Institute is the UK partner for the International Carpentries Organization. We use a variety of collaboration models to help deliver courses. Um, we collaborate with schools and departments, biological sciences, IGMM, the library, geology, etc. We train a variety of different people, including staff, graduate students, um, uh, PhD students, including on doctoral training programs. And we also participate in successful training program funding bids so that there are doctoral training programs like biomedical AI, where writing in Carpentry's training for the new students has helped get that funded. And it's growing. This has data only up to uh, May 2020. And in those two years, we ran 37 events involving 45 days of training to 900 learners, um, engaging dozens of helpers and over 20 instructors. So it's quite big, big impact on the university community, and it's growing. Last year, the Edinburgh Carpentries um, got a grant for data skills workforce development from the Scottish Funding Council's Upskilling Fund. This was a portfolio of short standalone courses designed to enable employees to upskill or working professionals to reskill through online or blended learning. And we ran seven workshops that reached over 100 participants. So it's very important upskilling in the time when People may have lost their jobs as the result of the pandemic and are looking for digital upskilling for the next thing. And this is one of the ways in which skills training for open science reaches beyond the university and out into the wider world. Here's what it looks like. Here's a pre-pandemic where you have dozens of learners sitting there at their laptops, following learning to code with an instructor on screens and a few helpers drifting around, helping people who have problems, helping troubleshoot, giving some encouragement and so on. So that was before. And now the new norm is upskilling and delivering workshops online with Lucia and Giacomo and Alex and everyone who can help people on Zoom and We've had to develop new expertise in helping people learn computing um, skills online. 
And one of the great things about working with a volunteer organization is that the Carpentries organization now has its own really nicely developed set of guidelines on how to do that effectively. So next, I want to move on to the, the next part and the new grant, which is put into perspective by the 2020 BBSRC Review of Data Intensive Bioscience. This was chaired by Professor Andrew Miller from the University of Edinburgh. And Andrew summarized this review as saying that bioscience has emerged as a data rich discipline in a transformation that is spreading as widely now as molecular biology in the 20th century. And in the BBSRC review report, the research community marks the moment and recognizes some of the changes required. They look forward to supporting new research careers where data are valued and shared widely, where new software is a natural part of biology, and where reanalysis and modeling are as creative as experimentation in understanding the rules of life and their applications. So this is very interesting for a number of reasons. And for the for today's audience, it's interesting because it means that funding agencies are seriously committed to open science and to developing this, the infrastructure for open science. The recommendations for that report, I'm going to focus on recommendation one, that UKRI BBSRC should take specific actions to increase the UK capacity in mathematical and computational skills within the biosciences. And if you want to read the rest of the report, which is short and important, then I put a link to it here, or you can Google BBSRC Review of Data Intensive Bioscience. So this recommendation one meant that they put out a funding call for upskilling. And we applied for and have just got funded a UKI funded two year grant to expand our carpentries training at the university. The objectives of that grant are to develop peer reviewed open training modules for biological data science, to deliver 98 days of remote training for our new workshops, to try something new for us, to offer a clinic after every workshop for learners to ask advice regarding their own projects, and also to train 30 new instructors to deliver these workshops, building a scalable training community. And this grant is a collaboration across the university, including the School of Biological Sciences, the School of Mathematics, the College of Veteran Medicine, Veterinary Medicine, the MRC Human Genetics Unit, and the Edinburgh International Data Facility. And the PI for this grant is Alison Minor at the Human Genetics Unit. So you will have heard about the, this a little from Ailey Ewing last month, who is also a collaborator. And we're specifically adding some new open teaching materials for open science. We're developing some new materials in basic and intermediate statistical skills, high dimensional statistics, and introduction to machine learning. We're developing new um, or adapting introductory materials on hands-on open science, including FAIR principles and data management, and a course specifically aimed at PIs called Reshaping Research, How Adopting FAIR Principles Increases Productivity. And we're also um, putting some materials together on data science computing with workflows, including good enough practice for scientific computing, an introduction to Conda, which helps remove the pain of software installation for scientific computing, and workflow management with either Snakemake or Nextflow. I just want to briefly talk about the where I'm going to focus on this, which is a workshop for good enough practices in scientific computing, a set of good computing practices that every researcher can adopt, including you. And this takes the practical viewpoint that future you is either going to curse current you, which is bad, or they're going to thank current you, which is better, depending on how well you organized your code, how well you documented your code, what you called your files, and whether you wrote readme files. And so the idea is to teach habits and practices that save you time in the future, improve your work, and make future you thank current you. And this is actually a workshop that's based on a wonderful paper called Good Enough Practices in Scientific Computing that covers many essential aspects of this in data management, in software, 
in dealing with collaboration, with project organization, with keeping track of changes and with writing manuscripts. And this is written by Greg Wilson and colleagues, the same founder of the Carpentries, and I recommend it as a good read. Some of the key points here is how important it is to give Git files and directories good names so you can find them again, and how important it is to write readme files, saying what there is in, in this location and why you did it. And these little habits cumulatively can make a very big difference to how well you work and how easy it is to share your data. So I'm drawing to a conclusion here, which is that doing open science requires foundational skills. Foundational skills, especially in coding, uh, data science and project organization. The Carpentries approach develops these skills in a community. Um, and we have a new grant from UKRI to expand skills training and grow this community in Edinburgh that you can get involved in. I also hope I've managed to convey that it's both impactful and rewarding to teach those skills. So impactful and rewarding to get involved. And I do want to talk about what's in it for me and why this isn't complete altruism. The first bit is that teaching Carpentries workshops improves my own skills and my work. The quality of the code that I write has gotten better over the years as I've learned to teach other people. Also, the instructor training that Carpentries runs is really good evidence-based pedagogy. I think it's really helped me to communicate better and teach people things better. So my involvement helps to improve the skills of people in my lab, and that directly improves the quality of the work from my research group. There are also some financial reason, reasons, which is that training Carpentries helps to get grant, grants funded. Um, this is impact. You can write it in the impact section of your research grant that you're doing bioinformatics research and this will have an impact on the community by teaching other people to do better data science. So that's a great strategy that has worked. And also we just got a new grant funded just to do more training. So all of that shows that my involvement in this is actually very good for my career. It's also nice. Working like this connects me with a nice and activist community full of lovely people who really want to help other people improve better and who know things I don't and can teach me things. And lastly, that teaching colleagues skills that they need is satisfying. I helped teach a workshop at the Natural History Museum a couple of years ago. And one of the students was dealing with some particular kind of spectroscopy data where she got data off the machine in some horrible text format that was coded by you know, some programmer in some small scientific instrument company 20 years ago. And every time, she got the data. She had to like copy and paste this, that, and move some things around and so on. It took half an hour, it was error prone. And we taught the workshop and then sat down to write a script that can just take data in that format and put it out in a nice format, which can be, um, which can be easily dealt with in downstream analyses. And the student had the most incredible look on her face and she just said, oh my God, this is gonna save me so much time. And being involved in the Carpentries, there's moments like that again and again, as you see people realize that this is going to actually improve their day-to-day -day life. And sure, it's going to increase their product productivity, but it's really going to decrease their irritation. So thank you, everyone. Everybody is welcome to get involved. You can sign up for the Carpentries mailing list here. Um, the Edinburgh Carpentries um, website is edcop.github.io, where we're, um, we post um, records of our workshops and there's more information. And we are about to update that with more information on the new workshops. So thank you from the Edinburgh Carpentries team for listening. And I'd particularly like to mention Giacomo Peru, Neil Chu Hong from the Software Sustainable Institute, Graham Grimes, Mario Antonioletti, and all of the organizing committee, steering committee, 
instructors, helpers, and organizers, and a team for the new UKRI grant, Alison Minot, Giacomo Peru, Catalina Vallejos, and Alex Teufel. So thank you, everyone. I think I can stop sharing now and take questions. <laughs>